boy, oh boy, there's a beautiful bevy of little alien robots. And I think that it's high time we get around to having some fun with these guys again. Fancy a countdown? Yeah, so do I. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. All of these guys fall within the category of Legends class size, but only some of them fall under the banner of what's known as a minibot. And today we're going to narrow this field down, define what that term is, and we're going to do the GotBot countdown of the 10 most significant, most important minibots in Transformers history. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, or if you're here for the first time, then welcome. Thanks for joining us for a little bit of fun here. I'm your host, your humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. GotBot. As always, please like, comment, share, and most importantly, now subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor. Me everywhere. Spend some time on the channel. See what it is that catches your interest. There's a lot of stuff here. Everything from uh, tutorials, uh, reviews, stop motion, the whole shebang. And we're going to take a look at these guys. I just wanted to take a second to give a few shout outs here. Uh, FNQ Transformers Collector, Blake Dunphy, Adam Bird, Sea Spray, uh, Lee Mayer, The 14th Prime, and Andrew Miranda. Um, I know that I don't have everybody listed there, but I'm trying to kind of give thanks where I can. Okay, so a mini bot. What is that? Well, it's not all of these guys. First, a minibot is a miniature vehicle. So, there are characters here that aren't really categorized under that because their characters in animation and in popular fiction aren't considered any smaller. Their robot modes aren't considered any smaller, which is strange in a few cases. Case in point, I give you Groove. Uh, now, he's a motorcycle, so you would think that, hey, it would make sense for him to be here. But typically, he is the size of all of his teammates on the Protectabots. I dig him in this size class. A lot of people don't. And when he got a Combiner Wars Deluxe release, um, a lot of people replaced him. And I see why. So we're going to take him out of it. We can also remove all of the Decepticons because these are Autobots, not Decepticons. But I want to take a second to discuss uh, a couple of honorable mentions there before we go on. So these are the Decepticons, at least the ones that I have. And to be fair, certain ones really kind of don't belong here. For example, the Sharktacon Knob. Pretty great little figure, but he doesn't really belong there. He probably should be larger, so we're going to take him out of it. The Insecticons along the back and this guy right here, Chop Shop, they all are, I think, a pretty nice scale uh, for the rest of a lot of people's collections. But again, the argument could be made that they should be a little bit bigger. So we're going to take them out of it. I also completely dig the Decepticon clones of Wingspan and Pounds. I've heard a lot of people say, hey, it'd be nice if they were a deluxe size. I can understand that, but they're great. They're just not what we want here today. Same with this guy. A crossover between G.I. Joe and Transformers. A nice nod, really, even though um, some people kind of didn't get where the motivation came from for this guy, but Viper is pretty cool nonetheless. Still, he doesn't fall under what we want. And I'm going to remove my custom uh, Rainmakers. I think that this mold for uh, Acid Storm was fun, was a great idea, but again, it's not exactly what we want because these guys really should be about a deluxe class size. They're bigger bots. And this guy, Blackjack, is an homage to a, uh, what were they, Micromaster, I think they were called, which again, 
is really small, but not quite what we're looking for. So we're going to take him out of it. I do, however, want to take a second to give a nod to Ravage, Laserbeak, and I guess technically Rumble, although the argument could be made that this is Frenzy, and this little blue guy would be Rumble. That's the way I see it anyway. Maybe you are different. Um, these guys are Decepticons, so they're not mini-bots because they're not Autobots. And they don't really even turn into vehicles, although these ones kind of do, sort of. I've, I've done, you know, full reviews of all these guys on the channel. Nevertheless, if you know the original fiction, the original animation, then these guys were pretty significant characters in episodes regularly, regularly, over and over. And for that reason, I do want to give them an honorable mention. They're small, they're just not quite in the category that we're looking for. I also want to give an honorable mention to these three guys. The argument could be made that both uh, Cloudbreaker and Fast Clash, or Fast Lane, whichever name you prefer, should be larger deluxes. I don't argue that at all. They are pretty fun toys nonetheless, and for that I want to give them uh, a mention since they're in at least the size class, if not the definition of the category. And the guy behind them is Warpath, who does fall in the category, even though this is his deluxe class figure from a few years ago. Nevertheless, I absolutely think that Warpath is fantastic. This guy is everything right with the franchise, right with the toys. But he doesn't quite make the list because though he's a fan favorite and certainly memorable, he didn't make too many significant contributions. At least not that I can recall and in doing my bit of research, though he was a great defender of freedom often and was certainly an excellent soldier when needed and enthusiastic I might add, he didn't do something that is remarkable as truly important. Ah, and now we have narrowed down the field. All of these guys are Autobots. They're the good guys, but there's still not room for everyone on the list. Um, I do want to mention some of the bots besides Warpath who actually fall in the category but did not make the list. Uh, the newest one, Power of the Prime Slash, excellent figure, but she kind of really hasn't done much of anything, at least not yet. I'm sure that she will appear in future fiction. But for that reason, she is not included. Um, Pipes. Pipes, another one. I like Pipes. This is not an update that done him justice, but... He was just kind of there a couple of times, done a couple of things, but was never a significant character. So he's off the list. Wheelie. Oh, Wheelie. Again, a prominent character, well known, and very polarizing. People really either like this guy or really, really, just really don't. Can you tell which one I'm in? He might be prominent, but he didn't really do much of anything, although once he did uh, help, I think with, maybe it was with Blur, and he did uh, return Metroplex's transformation cog, or try to, I think he did return it. But generally he was just sort of there getting in trouble with Daniel, so he's off. Tailgate. Another one that I think more recently has had more prominence in fiction, uh, especially in the comic books, but in his most popularized uh, version, which of course would have been that G1 animation, the guy, if I'm not mistaken, got stomped on, along with Swerve, who again has found a much bigger fandom with uh, his iteration in the comics, but neither of them are going to make it quite this time. And now uh, this one sort of pains me, because I love the guy, love the figure, but the Titans Return Sea Spray. As excellent as Sea Spray is, as much as I like the guy, he had a couple of prominent episodes, but he didn't really do much that was overly important. He almost did, 
but he didn't quite get there. Nevertheless, he's an excellent character, just not one of the ten most significant. And then there were ten. Okay, so these guys are the ones that, believe it or not, made the most significant contributions. Um, they might not have been big, it might not have only been one thing, but I think you're going to notice a bit of a theme as we go through here. And I don't think that number one is going to be exactly who you expect. In fact, I'm willing to bet that nobody thought that number ten was going to be Bumblebee. Bumblebee, granted, has a huge following ever since his first appearance and he's come in fiction after fiction. He's always been someone who has had some of the most endearing and engrossing relationships. He's been the glue very often that holds the Autobots together. Why is he included here? Because there was uh, an occasion where he actually did save Prime um, when he needed a... Uh, a Cosmotron? I, is that what it was called? I can't remember. But he and Idealjack went and they tangled on Cybertron. They, they were brave. They went through the space bridge. They tangled on Cybertron with the Rainmakers. They had some acid rain poured on them and it was not a fun time at all. But because of his enduring relationships and because of his uh, significance in having so many events happen and having a close relationship with so many of the uh, human characters, Bumblebee has to take the number 10 spot. Number 9 goes to the impulsive, brash, and often maybe overly brave Cliff Jumper. Though I love the guy, his most significant contribution may have come in the form of saving Sparkplug. Arguably, there are other times when he made, um, you know, significant inroads during some of the key battles, but perhaps his biggest was the fact that he actually saved the character of Sparkplug. On the number eight, it's time for number eight, and away we go with Power Glide. Power Glide kind of just randomly showed up out of nowhere. But he did play a, one kind of really significant role, along with Bumblebee, as a matter of fact, when the two of them discovered the island that would become Dinobot Island, the safe haven where the Dinobots would be able to kind of live in peace until they were needed. And for that reason, he takes the number eight spot. Number seven probably goes to the whiniest Transformer of them all, that being Huffer. And what did he do besides complain all the time? Well, he actually had a role uh, in making Snarl and Swoop, and he helped to build them. He also helped rescue the Autobots uh, in an episode where they were unable to transform. For both of those reasons, Huffer has to take the number seven spot. Number six has to go to everybody's favorite peace-loving hippie Autobot, that being Beachcomber. And what was his biggest contribution? He's the guy who discovered the Golden Lagoon and the Electrum. That gold coating that has become iconic with basically being invincible. And it's as simple as that. And for that reason, he takes number six. The halfway mark, number five, might be a little bit debatable because actually, Rewind here is one of the minions, so to speak, for Blaster. Nevertheless, because of his size and the fact he isn't out about, technically he does fall within the ranks of a minibot. And in popularized fiction, besides for kind of having a progressive romance in the current comics, in terms of the original animation, he went back in time to the first Cybertronian War. He's also known to be able to translate ancient uh, Quintesson, evidently. Who knew that he had so many skills? But. For the contributions he's made, we have to give Rewind the middle of the road spot. I bet nobody expected this guy to be in at number four. He is the impulsive, the impatient, and the fast wind charger. And why would he be so high on the list? As much as I hate to say it, one of his most significant achievements is the fact that he saved B from a chasm. In other words, without wind charger, we might no longer have Bumblebee. And while some people would call that a very important contribution, others would say, oh, we'd be better off without a bee. Uh, he also uh, had a role in saving Sparkplug from being kidnapped. 
He laid detection plates around the Ark that were designed to kind of be an early warning system for intruders. And who can forget when he was part of the masquerade menasaur and took on the characterization of Wild Rider. For all of those reasons, it's really kind of undeniable that Windcharger has to take the number four spot. Number three is the only grumbling guy that could probably give Huffer a run for his money, that being Gears. Here's the thing though, Gears actually cares. And that was proven many times. In fact, it's been proposed that he grumbled so much in the hopes that others would be able to see the kind of positive side of things. You know, they, they kind of get tired of his, his complaining and look for the glass being half full. He was also involved in the uh, design and construction of Swoop and Snarl, plus he had a hand in laying the detection plates for that early warning system that I mentioned earlier. So he kind of done a couple of things. Worked a lot behind the scenes to make people feel better about being stranded on an alien planet. At least Earth was an alien planet too then. Nevertheless, for both of those contributions, he clearly takes the number three spot. Let's move on to number two. Number two is going to go to the tough, the macho brawn. And what role did he have that would be significant enough to be this high on the list? Well, he's one of very few Autobots who has actually been inside the body of Megatron when he got shrunk down along with Perceptor. Plus, he learned a valuable lesson that sometimes brains went out over Brawn. Pardon the pun. Also, it was Brawn who helped discover the cave that contained the fossils of dinosaurs. In other words, he helped discover the things that created the Dinobots that would be used for them. I don't know if anybody can kind of deny the fact that his significance holds true if he had a hand in creating one of the most powerful and enduring and fan favorite groups in all of the franchise. Who doesn't like a good Grimlock now and then? By the way, have you noticed that up to now, many of these have been sharing a theme. No? Stick around, because I'm going to kind of touch on that after the fact. But for now, let's move on and look at number one. Believe it or not, that honor has to go to Cosmos. I know. I'm as shocked as you are. However, Cosmos probably have the most important, most significant contribution of any of the Minibots. You see, there was a time during the uh, Autobot Parade, or uh, was it an Autobot Appreciation Day, when things took a turn for the worse, and the Autobots were actually banished from Earth. Little did anyone know that their ship was actually on a collision course with the Sun. Now, thanks to the help of, I believe, Trail, trail Breakers, uh, <laughs> force field beam, I guess that's what it was, and Cosmos, that tragedy was avoided. The fact of the matter is, if Cosmos had not managed to pull their ship out of the way, the Autobots would have hurled into the sun, and a universe under the rule of the Decepticons, I shudder at that thought. Alas, here we are again, at the end of another countdown, and here's the kind of themes that I saw throughout here. Several of these guys took roles of being a protector, doing things like putting down that early warning system. But many of them, a surprising amount, had a role in the construction or at least the design and creation of the Dinobots. Who could have ever expected that unless you sort of look into it? And most importantly, I don't know if anyone without kind of thinking hard about it, would have ever put Cosmos as number one. But when you kind of save your entire team from hurtling into the sun, it's really sort of undeniable now, isn't it? Anyway, let me know who else you would have put on the list, what sort of changes you would have made along the way. You know I always love to hear from you guys. Please, once again, I'm going to say hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for dropping by, giving me some of your valuable time. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.